Hey everybody, how's it going? Okay, look at the front of my little 84 GT Mustang that yeah, I know I got the headlights knocked out of it right now, but slowly putting her back together. She's been sitting for too long. What you're looking at is a little 302, uh, about 78, 79 model block, something like that. It's got a 94 model roller cam, HL roller cam. Howard uh, roller lifters, the link style lifters, it's conversion style lifters. The rocker arms are crane roller, uh, crane cams, roller rockers. Intake is a Edelbrock Performer RPM air gap. You can get over here where you can see that. See that right there. The RPM air gap. And I did the custom powder coated colors. That is a, uh, there's the pulley. Silver metallic base coat, candy red top coat. It's all powder coat. But actually, the subject of this video will fit for any type of vehicle, whether it be Camaros, whether it be Mustangs, whether it be Jeeps, it doesn't matter. Because my dilemma is, look at my distributor. Now, my distributor here is something that's kind of new on the market lately that I've seen. GM, HEI style upper, the lower fits the uh, Ford blocks. And you can get them to fit the Mopar blocks or whatever, it doesn't matter. The GM HEI design right there is probably one of the most simplest designs of ignitions you can get. One wire technically, one hot wire, and you've got ignition. You're great. Um, but what I discovered is I'm, not, I'm kind of a little afraid I might have some hood clearance issues. That straight edge right there, fender to fender, you can kind of see that right here, we got a little bit of gappage here because... It's sitting right on top of the distributor cap. Now, bear in mind, the uh, distributor is not totally seated. If you look right here, it's still got about a quarter inch up. And that's because down below that is a drive shaft that runs the oil pump. Well, in order for me to make the seat the rest of the way down, I could turn the crank a little bit, and it was, should drop the rest of the way down. But that motor is, like, totally fresh, never been started, and it's a little bit hard to turn, so I'm not, not going to do it. I'm just going to accommodate that extra quarter inch at the bottom. But what the video is all about, okay, straight edge, simulating this being the hood. Now, granted, the hoods on these Mustangs have a little bit of a rise, so I think I'm actually good. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys a trick on how to check hood clearance. This is close enough that I would really like to know because, you know, if I hit the throttle, the motor is going to rock. And especially if I was to have it on the drag strip and I drop the clutch on it and the motor torques over. That you know, might be a little bit of rockage going on there that might bump the hood. So I've got the factory hood, as you can see there. So what we're going to do is we're going. I'm going to show you a trick how to check clearances between the top of this and the surface of the hood. Be right back. Okay, well, what this right here is, if you want to go to the hardware store and you buy a whole bunch of bag of bolts or something like that, that's a little bag that's around the hardware area that you put your bolts in so they can weigh them for char. Know how much to charge you. This. It's kind of like silly putty play though. So it's a lot lighter. This stuff's kind of weird actually. But it's called, well, Super Dough. I got it at the Dollar General store. But what we're going to do is stick that to the top of that. Just let it rest. It's sitting up there like that. And you can see, you know, the reason the bag's there so it doesn't stick all over my stripper and get some nasty crap all over it. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to close the hood on that. Now, mind you, that's probably close to eh, seven eighths of an inch thick, something like that. Just ballparking, three quarter to an inch, whatever. So when I close the hood, it's gonna the hood's gonna come down and mash this putty right here. If it doesn't touch it, I know I got plenty. But if it does touch it, it mashes it down. I can measure how much hood clear, clearance I have, plus the quarter inch down here when the distributor seats completely. So let's close the hood and see what happens. Okay, I'm closing the hood. It's coming down. And you can tell right here, you can tell how long this car's been setting. We got this uh, rise right here, which I think we're totally good, but I just want to know for sure. Mash down the hood. Actually, it's going down further, farther than uh, factory specs. I'm actually pushing the hood down past the latch part. Now, this hood right here, you know, I actually have to pick it up and drop it. It'll latch, but now I've got it mashed down now. Let's pick it back up. All right, people, I'm doing this with one hand here. Where's my latch? Here it is. All right, deal with the camera for a moment. Okay, look at our little silly putty Play-Doh crap here. 
looking at the hood it didn't touch anything you could look at the top of the putty it didn't touch it at all so I got ample totally great clearance but let's just out of curiosity let's stand it up that way so now we're a good inch and a half tall or something like that and we'll see if it matches it down then be right back okay look at here see it kind of matched the top of it down it's a little flat right there and you really can't see it on the hood so it didn't stick to the hood at all so how much clearance do I have let me turn my I know it's sounding like a splitting hairs because I'm using calipers, but hey, what the heck's first thing I grabbed. Okay, measure about what to the top of the flat spot. Looks like I got about an inch and a quarter clearance between the top of the distributor and where the hood hits, and plus the quarter inch and down here that's got to be seated gives me, I got about an inch and a half clearance total. Yeah, thereabouts, a little more. So there we go. I answered my question, do I have hood clearance? I'm going to safe to just drop the hood and not damage anything. Looks like I am. Want to know another good use for this little stuff? Alright, what you're looking at here is the uh, head from a small block Chevy. This block right here is actually built from a rock crawler I used to own years ago. Big old black three quarter ton Chevy. But I got rid of the truck and the motor never got dropped into it, so I've still got it been sitting on the stand for a long time. All right, all right, the super foam, silly putty, whatever. Let's pull off a little piece. What we're going to do is we're going to stick it right inside here. All right, what does that have to do with anything? Very good question. All right, here's your valves. Now, when it, um, for the people who I'm gonna try to make, I don't, I don't really have a motor to build right now. I will later on, and I really don't feel like slapping this together for the sole purpose of that. I wish I had some valves out, but regardless, these valves right here, whenever your cam comes around on its lobe, these valves open up, which is air in or air out, depending on whether it's intake or exhaust valve. So whenever it, the valve lifts up off the seat. There is some clearance taken up there between this and these valve release right here on the top of these heads. So what does that mean to anything? Alright, this particular block right here actually has the, uh, a 268 solid lift cam in it. And what you do not want is uh, too much lift and too much lift in the valves. Let's, let's pretend like right here is, is this valve seat here. Let's pretend like that is a valve seat of the valve head. So whenever the can is working, it's coming up down like this right here. These pistons are coming up and down also. So whenever this is coming up, this is coming in. If you got too much lift on your cam, mm, it spells disaster. Valve start smacking pistons, bent push rods if you're at, if you're really lucky. Otherwise, you press you totally press all the push rods. You could hurt the cam. You could, I mean, there's a lot of things that could happen if it gets smacked too hard. So what does this mean to anything? Okay, notice at the angle here. We're going to angle this like that. Okay, again, simulate this right here being your valve seat, your valve uh, part of the umbrella. Okay, valve's coming in, piston's coming up, it's going to make an impression like this. Then it comes back up, and that do a little better impression. Let that simulate being where the valve mashed down on into the piston. Now, let me grab something real quick. Be right back. Okay, what I did was took that razor knife right there and cut that stuff right down the middle right there. So now you can see the thickness. Let me roll my calipers out and use it for a pointer. You can see the thickness of the clay stuff right here. Actually, this thing is just to give you guys a heads up. Use Silly Putty or Play Doh for this right here. This is the first time I've used this stuff. It works great for showing that hood clearance, but for checking clearances for a valve train, it sucks. It's got too much, it's like a foam, but it's got too much rebound. So you'll be way off. So use Silly Putty or Play Doh. It does a much better job. So now what we want to do is, I'm going to turn my calipers on. I'm going to measure the depth of that impression. And we'll just call it right there. Like I said, this is just a simulation. It measures 200 thousandths of an inch. Now, I'm not saying this is proper clearance for this motor. I'm just showing you how to check it. And what you have to do is you have to check for whatever motor you're building, 
what your proper clearances will be. If you're running uh, forge pistons, you can run tighter clearances. If you're running cast pistons, you've got to have a looser clearance, but cast uh, pistons expand. Uh, Keith Bike Hyperutetics, they expand a little bit, but not as much as a cast does, but forge don't expand nowhere near as much. These pistons right here are cast pistons of this one. So, anyway, you've seen how I checked it. Let me just do one more quick little thing. And come down there. You see right there a little tank sticking out. That kind of gives you how much depth of that putty right there. And you now 200, say about a quarter inch. Because uh, .250 is a quarter inch. But I mean, I'm, like I said, this does not mean that is a proper clearance for this motor. That's just me giving you simulation on something you can use. Go into the little kitty section, buy you some Play-Doh, and there's the uses you can do with it. Never thought Play-Doh could be used for a tool. So there you go, everybody. Never thought Play-Doh or Silly Putty or something like that could be used as a tool, huh? I showed you how to check hood clearances. And like I showed you on my Mustang, but even my Jeep here behind me, you can do the same thing. If you want to be stuffing under the hood, something under the hood to have a big blower or, or something on it, and you need to check a hood clearance, there you go. That's the way to do it. I mean, there's several different th ways you can use that stuff. And there's just a couple quick examples. Uh, checking valve train clearance. Use Play-Doh or Silly play not that foamy crap I was just using. That foam stuff worked great for showing the hood clearance, but I would not trust that at all for showing internal clearances because there's just too much going on to risk you know, it not being accurate. So, if you like that tool tip, give me a thumbs up. If you like my channel, subscribe. And share out the knowledge. Share it with your Twitter, your Facebook, your YouTube channels, whatever you got. Share it out. Spare the knowledge. So everyone that has been subscribing, everyone for your likes, I really appreciate it. I really do. It gives me the incentive to keep doing this. I really enjoy it. So everyone, most of all and most important, everyone, have a great day. Peace out. See y'all.